Hello there. Welcome to beautiful Huntington Beach, California. How beautiful. What a nice day. Uh, I'm Mark Christopher and I'm here with another inspired message that I think could help us. Um, this message is about you know, the similarities between flexibility training, if you will, in fitness and the same concepts really helpful to us as we begin to follow God and His leadings and what we should do and also allowing Him to mold us into the things of God. Usually these things are very difficult to do, all kinds of you know attacks come against them and we're forever trying to think what's going on and so this helps us um, to understand you know exactly what's going on and it gives us you know an understanding and so let's share I'm gonna share that and so let's jump right into it hallelujah I was a personal trainer for years in my 20s and I noticed similarities between the two and I can't get over the striking similarity between allowing God's will to happen in our lives and the concept behind flexibility training. Um, so many times people come into the gym and you can see them, man, they can hardly move. They're, and they're not even old. They're just stiff and sore. And it's amazing after, you know, three or four months of flexibility training, you know, where I'm very careful and cautious at first, but leads to deeper and deeper, you know, stretching. These people are walking around the gym on their toes, jumping around. I feel so young, you know? And so, it flexibility training is really one of the underestimated needs in fitness because, you know, we're always working and hard to do things and they can cause, you know, stress in our lower back, you know, hamstrings. And if we're not careful to have a faithful stretching regimen, you know, I stretch before every workout. I can't even think about doing it. It only takes one small thing. Oh, and you're out of the gym for two or three months because you weren't bright enough, you know, to, to stretch. You didn't think it was important. Oh, stretching's for girls, right? You know, and uh, this concept is really clear when you, you know, participate in yoga, if that's what you do because, you know, you can always go deeper in a pose. You can always go deeper. And that's how it is in stretching. You can always go deeper. And, and that has great effects to it. And so, you know, it helps our muscles from, you know, getting damaged while we're working out. It brings a little, you know, life to us. Wow, I'm not so stiff. I can move around, you know. And so it's important. So let's, under, let's begin to understand this. When you consider flexibility training, you have to get it in your mind that it's unlike any other training that we do in the gym, you know? You know, we go in and we, we're gonna work out and we're gonna lift weights, break our muscles down, and they're gonna get stronger. So what do we do? We force heavy weights on ourselves and we force ourselves to do that is difficult and painful and uh, one of the keys in cardiovascular training is you know getting the heart rate up and so the only way to do that is by doing some cardio exercise and you have to force yourself to do it you have to not give up when your heart's going you know and of course you should be careful in that when I did my you know, aerobics class back in the 80s, early 80s, 80, 81, 82, and, and up in that, that time, you know, it, it's, it's really important, you know, that we allow that to happen because, you know, these things that we do to force cardio and force weightlifting, most of the stuff is we're forcing it to happen, you know. 
And stretching is so the opposite of that. You know, when we stretch, the goal in stretching is to relax. Breathe deep. And just allow the process to happen. We, 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 we don't understand the difference. I see people coming into the gym and they're trying to stretch. They put their leg up and they're pulling and pulling and pulling. And I'm thinking, boy, someone should talk to them. You know, lots of times I will sit beside them and start stretching on my own. You don't want to tell someone what to do unless they come to you. But, you know, what a difference it is when we begin to stretch correctly. You know, that kind of stretching, you rip your hamstrings, you can rip different things by forcing it, you know. But, you know, stretching is totally different concept. There's no force in stretching. We're allowing it, we're resting, relaxing, and letting it go. You know, stretching is funny. If you think, if you understand it correctly, um, our bodies stop automatically when we begin to stretch. It's like a knee-jerk reaction. It's a defense our body has. Like, lots of times I'll have people lay down, keep one leg straight, and lift the other one up. And if I go up kind of quickly, it'll stop by itself. Not that he's doing it, that the body just stops it. And so, of course, I'm very careful to go slowly and very you want to be very careful especially at the beginning doing this you know but that's how it is you know what I mean it's it, it's it's when you get to that point of okay don't go anymore and your body does that to is like a self-defense you know it's like oh my god if this keeps going it's gonna rip my hamstring stop but if we get to that point, you know, slowly, we begin to hold that point, that extension, whatever stretch we're in, and we begin to start breathing deep. I know it's very hard to do that while you're stretching because all you can think about is the pain, but when you do that, it causes your muscles and your hamstring, forget, just for example, to begin to, okay, stop. And as you breathe, kind of like let's go and it says okay we're here to stretch this isn't dangerous and when you do that and you begin to be patient all of a sudden my god you just stretch so much more and you do all you're thinking about is breathing relaxing and just letting go letting go you know what I mean and your body trusts you now and it releases it's hold, if you will, on that muscle. And it says, okay, go ahead, do what you want. I can see you're doing it right. You know, that's how we protect ourselves from injury, you know. Don't ask me, God made us that way. And so, you know, this is how, this is how you can go deeper and deeper and deeper in stretching. And I've seen people that you could hardly pick their leg up. You know, I'm like this with their leg down and up, and I'm like, oh my God, this person is so stiff, so, you know, whatever. And you know, after three or four months, you know, the guy's leg's way up here. And he jumps up afterwards and goes, works out. And he's like, thanks, bro. Help me stretch, you know. And so, you know, this is how it is in our walk with God when He's trying to lead us somewhere, or is he, or he's trying to deal with issues in our life where he has to mold us, you know what I mean? You know, like the potter, the example of the potter, you know? And so, this is the goal behind following God and being changed into his image, that we learn to let go and trust God and not try to figure it out and not try to be rebellious and do our own will. And, you know, that's what is, that's how, the, that's how it's similar, you know. As you begin to trust God to His will and let it go and stop fighting it, you know, 
you begin to be changed into the image of God. You begin to go where God's called you to go. And you begin to get deeper in God. And, you know, it's amazing what God can do in your life when you allow Him to lead you. You know, like Caleb, the only one that said, Let's go! What are you talking about? You know, the only one to enter the promised land, you know. See, this is vital, you know, vital to our walk with God, just like it's vital to our fitness. You know, if you don't stretch and you're working out all the time, you know, you might be 20 and I don't need it, but it's got a lot more benefit than you can realize. So let's begin to look at this subject and, you know, begin to see how, how God can help us and give us illumination, if you will, in our minds to what's going on as he's trying to change us and what's really going on when he's trying to lead us, you know? So, um, <laughs> in the Old Testament, uh, you remember, um, it's in Exodus 32, verse 9, you remember um, these people, Israel, you know, they're being led by God, you know, through, you know, the Red Sea. Wow, you know, here they are getting the Ten Commandments, you know. God's done so much. Israel, I mean, get them out of Egypt, like, like that. Red Sea, killing off Pharaoh's army. I mean, are you kidding me? This is not the time to start doubting God, you know. And so, here they are. I think Moses was getting the Ten Commandments or something, and he goes, and he goes, Exodus 32, 9, he goes, And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, <laughs> this people that are following you, I've seen them. And behold, behold, see, they are a stiff-necked people. <laughs> you know, I think that was, you know, while they were making the golden calf. This is, this is the one who saved us from Egypt, this golden calf, you know? And he's like, I, you know, at one point he said, get out of the way, Moses, I'll just kill him and start over. He's like, God, you can't do that. <laughs> he's like, all right. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's important that we take the leadings of God seriously and, and take the molding and shaping of God in our life seriously because God's doing something and he wants to accomplish something and, you know, the result of not doing it is, you know, has never been a good ending for any of these people in the Bible that we're going to look at, you know, they, you know, it wasn't a good thing. So I love how descriptive the word stiff neck is, you know, he's, he's a stiff neck people, he said, you know, it's like God brings him to the promised land, Ten Commandments are going to come down, he's trying to turn their head to see the way he does things and to see the destiny before them. And they're like, no, no, I don't want to turn my head. No, no, I, I want to go back to Egypt. I miss Egypt, you know? <laughs> and he's like, man, that's one stiff neck. I'm trying to turn them to see my will. And they're like, no, you know? And so, you know, we got to be careful when we're, as Christians, that. We're not always saying no to God when we feel these situations coming on and we know what we should do. And we say, the heck with that. Some of us say, the hell with that. You know what I mean? And so, we don't want to be stiff-necked. We don't want to be stiff, <laughs> like, like stretching. We want to be limber. <laughs> we want to be flexible with God. You know what I mean? And so, let's look into it. God refers to Israel many times as stiff-necked, stubborn, and rebellious. And, you know, so many of the times, probably almost all of them, He's trying to lead them somewhere and they're saying, No way, Jose! Digging their feet in, I'm not moving, I'm staying right here, you know? And they're like, He's like, Alright, have at it, see ya! And He's gone, you know? And it's important that we try to follow Him, you know. God tries to lead us and mold us into what He's planned from the very beginning. He made us 
He knows how to do it. This is one of the ways he accomplishes it. And we got to be careful not to say no to God because that's rebellion and that's being stiff-necked and stubborn. We don't want to be stubborn. So when it comes to being led by God, flexibility with our desires and what, and what we want to do is the key. It's the key. Just like, you know, letting go and relaxing is the key to stretching. And so, most of our Christian life is, it, most of the things we do in the Christian life, in the Christian walk, is opposite of this. And that's why it can be hard to understand, you know. Um, you know, just like we force ourselves to do weightlifting, oh, one more, you know. And just like we force ourselves to keep going when, you know, our heart's getting up there. And I just have to say real quick that uh, in, my, in my class, the first 20 minutes was cardio back in the day. And after 10 minutes, I would stop and, you know, have everyone take their pulse. We had a, I had a, a plaque on the wall that said, you know, your age group and where your heart should be and where your your the heart rate you want to be burning calories and getting the best cardio you can out of it to work your heart that's the whole goal and I would stop after the first 10 minutes and make them do that and I would say okay you know if you're this age and this is your heart rate you're doing great if you're down here pick it up a little if you want to get a little more out of it and if you're up here higher slow down okay because it's dangerous to do that so I'm not gonna say oh you just gotta do that you know because it's dangerous you know personal trainers are held responsible for what they share you know what I mean so do that you know I worked with a guy who was a cardiologist and he said you know don't do it on your neck we used to do it all the time he said there's a spot in your wrist and he's right it's just easy as can be you know that could block and cause different things to older people and so but it's important as you're doing that to know where you're going so I just want to say that for, for, the, for the fitness sake so no one gets hurt okay so so lifting weights and doing cardio you're doing all this you know and most of our Christian life is like that most of the time that's what we're doing you know some examples you know is we 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 are Christians and we desire to stand against sin so we take our posture and we say I'm not gonna do this and God help me and we're trying with all our strength and with God's help to do that you know we're forcing ourselves to change no you know like a guy you know no I'm not gonna drink alcohol and just get rid of my you know worries because they're gonna be there in the morning you know and I'm not gonna go smoke weed and think oh yeah man now I feel better oh let's talk about God oh yeah let's get high and talk about God oh yeah <laughs> right or you know a real you know issue with men pornography you know and so when I'm enticed back into sin, these are the things that draw me, you know, and draw other men, you know, and along with others, you know, you know, power, pride, you know, finances, money, all the stuff, ego, what you have, you know, a lot of these things drive us, you know, and they sometimes are in the way of what God wants to do in our lives, so, so, so we do that, we fight, we say no, you know, and we, and pretty soon it gets easier and easier. God helps us, you know, because we're addicted to some of these things. And it doesn't just happen overnight, you know. You try, you fail, you try, you fail, you try, you fail. And that's okay. That's how you do it. That's what it's all about, you know. Each time you learn something about God, each time you get a little stronger in your faith, you know. And so it's also like that in prayer, you know. Here we are praying, you know, and 
Bible says is powers and principalities of the air, darkness, rulers, and there's contending, and we're praying, and nothing seems to be happening, but something is, but we can't see it, and we're like, fighting, fighting, fighting God, and the enemy's trying to bring reasons for us not to pray. I mean, how many times you go to pray, and the kids need something, wife needs something, you know, these people need something. It's like, geez Louise, when do we ever get to pray? Because, you know, the enemy doesn't want you to do it. That should be a sure sign of you that's something to do. But you're forcing yourself to do that sometimes. You're saying, you know what? I'll deal with this in an hour. I'm going to go pray. I'm a Christian. What the heck am I doing living for Christ without praying? It's so foolish. Especially, the Bible says some things only come out by prayer and fasting. And, you know, I done that a lot a lot of things happened to me and I've done it since 34 years ago started doing it at least twice a year you know and then you know last 15 years I think I've uh, I've been doing it you know three days in October ending on Halloween three days in November ending the day before Thanksgiving and three days before Christmas ending on Christmas Eve and I and I pray in those times, and I fast, and it's painful, and I want something to eat. I mean, I'm hungry. Just water, three days, and it's good if you want to lose some weight. <laughs> but if you fast and you're not praying, you're kind of doing it for nothing. You know what I mean? It's all about that precious time with God, and I am never closer to God when I'm fasting and praying. I, he's right there. You know, and he's always right there, but you don't know it because we're so caught up. But, you know, it's hard. I have to force myself. You know, I'm fasting, I've got to work, you know, to make money. And, you know, everyone's going eating lunch, and then everyone's, you know, going by the bakery. And I'm like, I feel like the, I feel like, or I feel like when, when uh, I'm just kind of floating with the, my nose with the aroma, I'm like, oh, you know bakery <laughs> right and so you know we're fighting always fighting as a Christian doing all we have you know and uh, it's like that in, in witnessing you know witnessing should be the most natural and easy thing in the world you know it's like um, one of the it's like it's like someone shares with you a difficulty they're having and you're sitting there listening and you're oh, I'm sorry to hear that well, I, I hope things you know get better and we walk away and we're a Christian you know and they're not and we're like we don't even think why didn't I say something you know it should be the easiest thing all you gotta do is say Hey, can I share something with you? I was like this, you know, and that's Christ in my heart. Now I'm like this, and I'm not perfect, but wow, what a difference, you know. God can help you, you know. You should just give him a chance, you know. That's simple. How hard is that? I mean, what? I, I'm not a great theologian, you know. I know nothing except what Christ did for me, you know, and so it's important that we... Yeah, do that, you know, but here we are fighting, you know, oh, I don't know, should I say something? Oh my God, well, what if they don't like it and they don't like me anymore? Oh my God, I better not. Oh, but I'm supposed to. Oh, I don't know what to do. It's like, <laughs> we, we have to push that aside and say, no, I'm going to share the gospel in love. Where would I be if Christ didn't do it for me? You know, sometimes when you do that, sometimes when I begin to share with someone what God did in my life, I begin to walk away from it thinking, oh God, I just take for granted what you really did for me. You know what I mean? And, and when you pray for salvation with someone, it's like, sometimes you walk away and you're like, oh God, I remember when you saved me. Oh God, thank you, you're so beautiful, you know. This is what it causes, you know. But we're fighting to do it. I don't want to do it. 
You gotta do it. I don't wanna do it. You know, last words of Jesus. Don't forget to tell everybody. <laughs> we will. Problem is, we're not. You know, I'm not telling anybody. I pray with someone in church, but I'm not talking to somebody. That's, that's weird. I'm trying to push my stuff on them. You know, we get. Oh, who's not politically correct? Hallelujah. Praise God. So yeah, so in witnessing, and one of the hardest things we do as a Christian, and this is right down to who we are as a believer, the Bible says, if you don't forgive others their sins, you're not forgiven. So if you go through your life bitter, holding grudges, good luck when you get to heaven. I'm not going to say one way or the other, but I wouldn't want to trust in that. Oh, God will probably understand. Go ahead. You trust in that. I'm not, you know. And so, here it is. You know, the person hurt you. And you are hurt. You know, and I'm talking bitter. The things you did for them, the time you spent with them, the things you gave to them, they turn on you like a rabid dog. Wow. I'm bitter. <laughs> right? All right, you know, I'm bitter too. <laughs> so what? <laughs> Excuse me. And so, we have to fight unforgiveness. Fight it. Fight unforgiveness. I don't want to do it. You have to do it. And the way God looks at that is the parable of the unforgiven servant. The servant was forgiven this major debt by the king, and he said, Go for it, I forgive you, you know what I mean? And this other guy did something little to this servant, and he threw him in jail until he paid it. You know, the king found out about that, and he said, bring that servant back to me. You know, the servant stood before God, before, you know, in the parable, you know, and he said, I gave, gave you such an amazing forgiveness. No one could forgive you like that but me. And you can't forgive them this measly thing when I've commanded you to do it? What does the Bible say? Does, that, does, that, does it say cast him into outer darkness where there'll be uh, screaming, gnashing of teeth for eternity? You know? And I think Christ even says it's like that with you. You don't forgive, you're not forgiven, and so it's hard. So we're bitter and we're hurt. And it doesn't have to be happy and loving. You just have to forgive and let it go. Don't harbor it. Don't keep bringing it up. Don't talk to people about it. Let it go. I remember uh, 45, no, 30, 36, 37 years old. So much had happened to me, unrighteous, ungodly, in so many different ways. And I remember I was in New England, I was up in, uh, I think, near Revere Beach. No, it was Lynn Beach. And I'm sitting on this concrete thing, and the ocean's right down there, smashing into it. I remember sitting there for an hour, writing down the name of every person who really hurt me and offended me and just crushed me so many ways, you know. And I remember at some point holding it up saying, God, I forgive these. I pray for them. I say, God, bless them. And I say, I'm throwing this in the sea of forgetfulness. And I let it go. Float it down into the ocean. Float it out. You know. And I let it go. I forgot about it. I didn't dwell on it anymore. It's like, that's calling us to do that, but it's hard, you know. And it's hard to you don't have to be friends with them anymore. I'm not saying you gotta be foolish and let it happen over and over, but you gotta let it go. And so we fight that. I don't want to do it. I like this. I deserve this. I went through hell. I deserve to be angry and mad. You don't think Christ deserves it? You know? People he loved. Crucify him! <laughs> you can't get away from this, you know? You gotta forgive. And so... In all of those things, we are fighting with all of our strength against 
evil is trying to come into our life or that it is in our life, you know? And so the Bible says, when you have done all you can do, stand. After you fought, forgave, done all that, stand. Hallelujah. That's a, I was in the military and that's like, we're called to stand our ground in a battle. The enemy comes running at us. We stand our ground. We don't just stand there. We push back with everything we have. Push back, you know. That's how you stand, you know, in a battle, you know. And that's what we're called to do as Christians. And so, keep it, there it is, you know. But, but um, following God and allowing God to change us is completely opposite of all that. That's why people are so messed up, you know? They're, they're, they're like, they don't understand what's going on, you know? They, they just don't understand, so they make the wrong decision. They always do. Look at Abraham, father of faith, you know? Our oh, great example, you know? Him and his wife got tired, you know, of, you know, waiting you know, for God's will to come past, you know? And he goes, I don't know, I got a great idea. Let's do this, let's get her, make baby, woohoo, Ishmael, you know? Talk about screwing up a kid's life, you know? It's 15, 16 years old, they give his mother a bottle of water and a loaf of bread and say, all right, just go away and die, you know? And so, that wasn't a good move, you know. They should have just continued to wait, you know. And kind of like that with, with Job's wife, you know. She's they're like, he's waiting. He's making mistakes too. In the end, starts blaming God. His wife says something interesting. She goes, just curse God and die, will you? <laughs> and a lot of us get to that point, you know. Because we're trying to make this happen. It's not working. And so, you know what? Curse God and die. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll figure out something on my own, you know. And both ways are wrong. You know what I mean? In God's eyes. And he's trying to illuminate us to show us how we accomplish this. How we allow him to change us. And so, um... We need to allow him. It's like stretching. We need a lot. We need to allow his will to happen. We need to just, as we're going through these times, relax, trust God, you know, and just do what we know to do. You know, because that's how these things are accomplished. We don't figure out which way to go. We don't change ourselves. It's God's power. In 